The bomb cyclone. The what? No, I was just telling Dan about that. And he's like, we're not supposed to get that much snow. I'm like, it's not the snow. It's the fucking hurricane force winds have, have delivering you, the snow. Have you seen all the headlines? Of the bomb cyclone. I'm like. It sounds like a really bad white rapper. <laughs> yo, 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 I'm the bomb cyclone. Yo. Whether people are too bored is the problem. They're trying to make all their shit sound exciting, and it just sounds ridiculous. I think it's more that... Because, th th like, I don't think it's a new term. I read somewhere that just, like, we haven't had one of these in so long, but we're murdering the planet, so all these fun, exciting weather patterns are coming out of the woodwork to say hello. Uh... Bomb cyclone. Bombs. I'm I'm supposed to clean a cat patio at the shelter that day. I have a feeling I'm not doing it. Yeah. T tomorrow we're in Charleston. Charleston, by the way, last night. This is Jersey. It will be fine. Were you here for Sandy? Except this. It wasn't fine. This is like Sandy, too. This time there's it, snow. They basically are saying it's, it's more powerful than Sandy, except with snow. Now, it might stay out to sea, but it might not. Yeah, uh, just last night, just for entertainment purposes, um, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, and last night it was colder here than in Anchorage, Alaska. Anchorage wow. was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Charleston was 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. And we, we have a mutual friend who shall remain nameless who posted to her Facebook today who was like... I don't really want to go jogging. It's only 54 degrees out. It's so cold. And like everybody was like, honey, honey, no. Honey, no. <laughs> she lives in Orlando. Honey, no. And she's like, it's 54 degrees. It's so cold. And we're like, mm-mm. We would, we would kill for 54 degrees. <sighs> we are, we, the forecast for tomorrow is for a wintry mix, which sounds delightful, until you realize wintry that means mix slurpy that it means a it means a shit flavored slurpy yeah because everything is nasty and gross and oh hi daddy it's just all you get all the crap on the road not only gets washed up it gets washed up and then frozen together yep so it's just it's it's ice and, and it's never that pretty white wonderland. No. It's always dirty and gray and gross yeah. looking. It's a shit it slurp. It starts out that way. It's a shit slurp. Yeah. This should not be happening in Charleston. They, I think they said on CNN today that every state in the union reached freezing temperatures today. Well, not out west. Okay, yeah, every eastern state. Yeah. Because yeah. out west... California is still on fire. California is still on fire. We have a bomb cyclone. A and win we're out here hunting fucking woolly mammoths. I mean, the, the whole idea of the bomb cyclone thing, it sounds ridiculous and hyper hyperbolic. <laughs> if you could have just said, we're expecting coastal blizzard conditions. No hyperbole, still all of the, oh shit. Coastal blizzard conditions. I think it's conditions. different from a blizzard because a blizzard requires a certain amount of snowfall. This doesn't. It's just hurricane force winds with snow instead of rain, I think, is the difference. For it to be a blizzard, you have to get at least a foot of snow or something. Well, we'll get, well, it, we'll, it, it, it may raise to the challenge. You don't know. Meteorology with Nash and Tara. It's cold out there. You should all know that I studied art, so don't fucking listen to this. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, it is that time of year again. We've come to a new year. Yes. At long last. Which means here on What the Fuck is Wrong with You, it's time for our rectal spective. And I gotta tell you, I'm not feeling so hot today, but I did not want to miss the rectal spective. No one does. It's it's amazing. That's, it's it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, we, we the rectal spective, for those of you who have just stumbled across this live stream or the YouTube or whatever. <laughs> I'm if, very sorry. If you just wandered in now. Every year on this show, we go back and look at all of the glorious things that were reported in emergency rooms that people had put in their holes. 
All of the holes, by the way. All of the holes. Things they probably should not have put in them. All the stupid stuff we jammed inside ourselves. Yep. We were not supposed to. Yep, we'll get there. So do stay tuned. That is coming up. But we have, of course, as usual, our normal stupid. Because, you know, we, 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 we have to do that, too. And my God, we have... We're starting off with a bang this week. Let's get let's get my intro going here. Who boy. I think I'm required to get a rectal spective when I turn 50. Yes, I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up soon. Uh Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and this is beautiful Tara this I just I want you I want you to stop after I send you this headline I want you to sit there and gaze at it and enjoy it and, and treasure it I had a nickel for every time a man said that to me just just treasure this moment Oh, I saw this. Yeah. Poor unfortunate soul gets his penis stuck in London's subway gate. I had to explain to him what this meant. He, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Kellen Beck wrote this story <laughs> at Mashable. Kellen, you win. Because the opening line of this story is... He paid the price. A London 2 pastor this week snagged his inner thigh and penis in the fair gate while trying to jump the barriers to avoid paying. The jumper remained stuck and screaming for several oh. minutes while authorities struggled to dislodge him. Now, fair jumpers are assholes. Yeah, turnstile jumpers... You raise the prices for everybody. You suck. So I have no problem laughing at this guy, but oh my God, it gets better. That has to be pretty terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, we got video. Oh God, really? Yes. Yes, God, really. And you can, and I love this guy who took this video is my new hero. Everybody. Let's enjoy this together. I, I think we'll all enjoy this. Let's enjoy this. Hey, what's that? Sometimes when he's live alive, oh, my camera I can get a jump to Oh, shit. I look. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Every scream makes me so happy. This is why you don't go commando if you're gonna jump the turnstile. <laughs> you want it? You want a nice little protective sack for your sack? Yeah. If you're gonna do this to you. <laughs> And you can't really hear it, but the people around him, uh, the, the the people, at, you, I love Londoners. I, I I miss London. The people around him are going, "Hey, get him some butter." <laughs> you can just slide. They're, they're like shout. They're seriously. They're shouting recommendations for lubricants <laughs> to get his dick out of the turnstile. Butter is the answer for most problems. If butter, tea, uh, or Guinness don't solve it, you're dying. Yeah. At least in Ireland. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> oh, that was... Oh, God. That was wonderful. That was magical. I love... I just... I love that the guy at the intro, at the beginning going, My cameraman going to show you now. <laughs> Boy, do we... I feel like that'd be you. You'd be like, you guys, we found one in the wild. No, no, yeah, but I love how he just... This dude just rolled up an intro and shit. Yeah. Let's look now. I love that guy. I think the object lesson is, one, don't jump the turnstile. Mm -hmm. Two, if you must jump the turnstile, wear boxer briefs. I, 
just because boxers aren't going to protect you really you got to have you got to have the little sack sack oh i love this line after the jumper was freed he gave the police officer and another man who helped him a hug yes thank you for making my dick stop hurting I oh thank you stop hurting i bet it still hurts today well, yeah, but there is the the dull there's, throb. Yeah. There's the dull throbbing ache of oh god, I bruised my penis, and then there is the oh god, there is a piece of metal clamped onto my dick. Yeah. There's there's pain, and then there's pain. Yeah. Oh. That like was... honestly, when I had the leg hole saga, I stopped asking for the pain killers as soon as they cut my leg open. Because by comparison, it didn't hurt anymore. Like, the incredible, excruciating pain of having your, like, necrotic tissue in you compared to a hole in your leg. The hole is nothing. I was like, they were like, Jeannie, I was like, no, I don't even want the painkillers anymore. I'm fucking fine. The leg hole saga. Never forget. Ah. Uh, so, um... Do you remember when they did the changeover from uh, the old style push button ATMs to the touchscreen ATMs? We still had to have both around here. I will tell you, I've used both, and the touchscreen ATMs are a pain in the ass sometimes. Yeah. Especially when the temperature is either really, really hot or really, really cold. Because they can't detect you. It doesn't always register, so it gets frustrating. So I, a little bit, the guy in our next story, I empathize with him a little bit. Until he went over the line. There is a line. He went over it. And this, this is what over the line looks like. Hello, Florida. Lake Hole is the best character? Fuck you. That shit was horrible. Man beats ATM says it gave him too much cash. Man, I hate it when that happens. 23-year-old man who told police he punched an ATM because it gave him too much cash was arrested after bank officials said the attack caused at least 5,000 in damages. Well, you don't have that too much cash problem anymore. Yep, there you go. Coco police charge Michael Joseph uh, Alexic of Merritt Island on Friday with criminal mischief nearly a month into the investigation of a disturbance at the Wells Fargo branch. Uh, authorities said Aless Alex Alexic Alexic what oh, strange spelling Alexic uh, can be seen on surveillance videos standing at the ATM pummeling the electronic teller's touchscreen. A short time later, an apologetic Alexic called the bank and told the manager he punched the ATM because, quote, he was angry at the ATM giving him too much money and he did not know what to do. This is a good sign that you might need some therapy. You. Like, we all have daily annoyances in our lives. The drive through fucks up your order... Someone splashes you from a puddle. Like, little things happen yes. in everybody's lives that fuck up your shit. Yeah. And how you deal... I, I feel like it's not big stressors that determine whether you're fucking insane, but how you react to little stressors. Because people that can't handle little, everyday things, you got fucking... Prom like, big things no one expects you to handle with a smile, but little shit? I mean, w whenever I have to deal with, like, public technology that's fucking up, and we, we all have to deal with, like, the, the automated ter checkout lanes yeah. and all that kind of shit. Public Move item to bagging area. And you bagged it. Yeah. Uh, Move item to bagging area. You so, you know what I, so you know what I do? I punch the machine. No, I don't. Yeah. I go and find somebody. Yeah. Like a fucking grown-up. I go, excuse me, pardon me, this machine is fucked. Yeah. You know, that's... Please to be helping with the technology. Thank you. Yeah, you. you I, he, I love him. It was giving him too much money, and he did not know what to do. Really? Where what you we don't do is punch the shit out of it. Where were you? If, where were you raised with Tarzan? Like I'm concerned the day Starbucks gets your order wrong. Yeah, is that is that like his first response to everything? 
when faced with consternation, punch it. <laughs> when a problem comes along, you must punch it. No, no, you don't. No, you must not. <laughs> because now well, you're, in you're in jail. Now you're in jail. I mean, and I, I kind of feel like you probably like. I've never really understood. I'm gonna. Oh wow, we're getting ready for good YouTube comments here. Oh boy. I've kind of never understood why men deal with angst by punching walls and shit. That is kind of the the the. That's a that's a dude thing. Like I throw shit. I punish the inanimate object. I have the story now. I have the tangent. When I was living in Savannah years ago, um, I had a, an apartment that, you know, it, it was kind of hard to find a place, and I, I needed a roommate. And I was holding on to this apartment and like by my fingernails. So my friend said, I've got a roommate for you. And I'm like, okay. And his name was Larry. And Larry had anger issues. And one You would too if your name was Larry. What one look at Chipper Jones. One one time when I uh I drank all the milk on an evening and it was too late to go get more milk. Punched a hole in the hallway wall. We did not. That's what I'm fucking talking about. We did not own the apartment. We were renting. Now you're not getting your deposit back. The apartment, and he punched. So he 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 said he'd make it up to me, and he went out to the fucking hardware store and got the bucket of that drywall repair stuff. Only he didn't do the sanding and whatnot. He just awesome. he just put the goop on the wall to cover the hole and it was like ta da. You yeah, know, there's more steps to that process. There's more steps. There's. I just I I, I know a dude who literally broke four of his fingers because he punched the outside of a building in New York City, and I'm like, what the fuck did you think was gonna happen? Of course, the stone building is gonna win. This. You're not fucking Wolverine. I just, we have the option. We have two options. We can talk it out with someone and attempt to find some constructive outlet to resolve our conflicting feelings and deal with our anger or oh, be a man. We smash shit. And I get that impulse. Like something that Dan still finds a little upsetting is pain makes me angry. So, like, if I stub my toe on the wall, I want to punish that wall for hurting me because I'm crazy. But I throw shit. Punish the inanimate object. That's still, Tara, that's still not very good because... It's not. I know. I said, because I'm fucking crazy. That's the shit mm -hmm. you own. You're breaking your own shit. But at least I'm not breaking my own self. <laughs> That's the important thing. Shit you can replace. You only get one left finger. They don't give they don't replace those at Best Buy. In college, my cordless phone used to rattle. Because we had really terrible phone connections when I was in college, and like one out of 30 times your call would go through. So if you had to call someone, you just had to keep trying and trying and trying because there weren't enough lines to cover all the students because my college was bullshit. And I would get so mad that I couldn't make calls that I had a row of dents above the bed in my dorm room from me throwing my phone. And my phone would rattle when you shook it. And I'm not saying that's a good way to be. Do you think maybe because you kept throwing the phone, it probably wasn't helping? No, it was honestly the, the, like everyone had that problem. Well, yeah, I, if everyone was having a problem, that's one thing, but I don't think, you know, a smashed internal electronics on the phone is I mean, making no. it any better. I'm not advocating that behavior. I'm just saying, <sighs> if given the choice between smashing something else and smashing yourself, smash something else! Now we're going to have reports this Someday week. I'll find out that, like, Toy Story is true, and all the things I've thrown over the years are sad, and I'm going to just... Have a breakdown. Uh, okay, we have... We, the, uh, why? Uh, hold on a sec. I, uh, uh, hey, what are you doing? Ha! Nah, that was... Ha! 
Oh, bless you. Ah, uh, I have I too much fur in this house. So you, Peggy. Hello. Hi. I'm sitting far away, so she can't grab me. Because <laughs> whenever she sits at that desk, she grabs me, and I hate it. Okay, next one comes from Oregon, and it's it, this falls to the category of you, you didn't think this one through, did you? Is this the gas thing? No. Okay. Oregon man drives truck off pier in a failed getaway attempt. Huh. An Oregon man who drove his truck off a pier in spectacular fashion managed to swim several hundred feet away from officers before having to turn around in the frigid waters to be rescued. Officers arrived at North Tongue Point Wednesday morning after getting <laughs> is that the real name of a place. That is North Tongue Point. <laughs> That's what she called it anyway. Um. After getting reports that a man identified as 27-year-old Timothy, Timothy, Arafee, Arafee. I'm still stuck on his name is Timothy. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, doing it this. is. I'm not. I'm not pretending like I can't say the Timothy. His name is literally T I M O F E Y. And the last name is E-R-O-F-E-E-F-F. -F. So this story is clearly brought to you by the letter F. 27-year-old Timothy Irafif was trespassing on boats. When uh, police approached Irafif to take him into custody, he sped down a dock in his truck and drove into the Columbia River. Oh, it was caught on camera. I wasn't aware of this. Let's have a look. There's a video. Let's have a look now. Caught on camera. Yeah, let's, let's, okay, there he goes. Whee! Into the, oh my God. Are they going to do it again in slow-mo? They're, they're going to do it again in slow-mo. Because that's exactly what the news always does. Here we go. Oh no, that's just the police coming to the end of the dock like, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> Sir, <laughs> as, you, that. as you can see from the dock, it wasn't like, you know, like a big marina or something where he was confused about the exits. There's no road there. It's over. The road is over. And it's, now you have no car. I mean, it's very visible. The road was over. Like you could have died by either drowning in your car or freezing to death. And now you have no car. And you still got caught. Yeah, a police a story of police say Irafif managed to escape the sinking truck and swim a couple hundred feet away from the pier, but then returned to be rescued. Because that water's freezing and you're going to die. And where were you going to swim to? Yeah, exactly. I, I, it's one of those, all right, number one, what were you doing on people's boats? Come on. Yeah. That's just weird. Probably looting. <clears throat> Number two, you could see where the end of the pier was. Yeah. Quite visibly, there's no there there. <laughs> it just, that, that's it. So It's not a bridge. As you're doing this driving thing, and you saw it was a very long pier, so he had at least a good minute to stop and think, wait a minute. To make to make a better decision. Wait a minute. If I stop right now, I might get arrested. I'll go to jail. I'll have to pay bail. I'll have to get a lawyer. But if I keep driving, I can swim to freedom. I could die of hypothermia and not have a car. <clears throat> okay. And I, and, and better plan. And, of course, the mugshot. Look at this yeah. grinning imbecile. He looks awfully fucking pleased with himself. <laughs> My name is Timothy. I used to have a truck. I don't have a truck no more. Maybe he changed his name because he, like, has a terrible lisp or something. 
<laughs> John the Wizard in the channel says, Sir, remain calm. We're coming to rescue you. No, you're going to yell at me. <laughs> no falling for that. <laughs> oh. He oh. looks like the bargain bin Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> That is mean. Now we had we had that wonderful headline to bring us in this week with the, getting your penis stuck in a turnstile. This is probably our most innocuous headline until you read the story. And they try the Rene Brana, who wrote the story for the Daily Journal Online, tried so hard, so very hard to make this seem. Oh God, yeah. Man arrested after restroom incident, which sounds so very polite know. and genial. Yeah. It's like there was an incident in the restroom, and this poor Who gentleman hasn't had a restroom incident. He had to be taken into custody because of the restroom incident. Yes, sounds very polite until we get into what the restroom incident was. Uh, Dislodge Police Chief James Bullock, quote. When the officer arrived, he found a 29-year-old man from Bonterre sitting on the bathroom floor. He had greased or looped himself with KY jelly. It was all over him, all over the floor, and all over everything. Bullock added the man had his pants pulled down and had on a pink tutu. She should also add that this was around 10 a.m. 10 in the morning. Yeah. Not 3 a.m. on a Saturday. In so, the like, Walmart. This wasn't a fucking club kid who did too much Molly and wound up at the Walmart. And of course, yeah, the, the, if you guess this happened in a Walmart bathroom, bathroom you are <laughs> correct, <laughs> sir. This was in the Walmart. Like, I, I think I would actually have to almost die before I would use the bathroom in a Walmart after all the stories we've done. Because someone in there is either making mess or has greased themselves down and is preparing a Swan Lake rendition. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just not fucking safe in there. I yeah, it's it's one of those. I I really am not a fan of public restrooms in general. Is, what? He lives there. Yeah. We have someone who lives here. Yeah. <gasps> in fact, he was the one that posted this one. Remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah. And I had him tag you in on it because. <laughs> Dear fucking lord. Like, how... How do you wind up lubed up head to toe in the Walmart bathroom in a tutu? <laughs> I'm, I'm not someone who... I'm not a big fan of public restrooms in general, but sometimes you have to use them. And this is part of why I'm not a big fan, because, you know, you really need to pee, long day of shopping, need to get home, but... So you go into the public restroom, you walk in... There's a guy with his pants down on a two in a tutu, covered in KY. He's like, "How you doing?" And you know, welcome to Walmart. You know, everything else in that bathroom was slippery. Oh God, yes. You know that shit got oh, everywhere. Oh God, yes. And he was probably like a fucking greased dolphin. Um. Police Chief Bullocks also said he had also written a message, a sexual solicitation, and had passed it under a stall to another person in the restroom. You don't need that when you're trying to pee. Or poop. Yeah. Cause you, you don't need that shit. Cause that's that's not that's not a happy time. Pooping in public is never a happy time. Very stressful. In a public restroom. It's always awful. And then you're in the middle of it, and somebody passes you a note and says, Hey, you want to fuck me? No. no. This is probably the least sexy time in my life right now. In the least sexy place. In the least sexy place. Because we've said it before, there is nothing sexy at the Walmart. Nothing sexy in the Walmart. Even their idea of, like, we were in a Walmart, and we walked through the lingerie area, and I'm like... Yeah, okay, I, I've said this many years like ago. Like, nursing bras are technically, yes, they are lingerie, but they're not lingerie. <laughs> and even even if you see there's something that might look attractive on someone that you might be like, ooh, that would be hot, they have those goddamn awful 
lights overhead so that everything is bright and slightly white blue tinted yep and it just it just adds this unattractive layer to everything i'm really partially convinced that walmart as an entity is some kind of weird unethical psychological experiment that we're going to find out about a hundred years from now like walmart as an entity is a series of little skinner box petri dishes all over the country this is the bad place <laughs> yes <laughs> you think it's um so i've i have i have before had to take my vehicle in for repairs in fact after the tree fell this past few weeks i take my car in for repairs hi grady grady's deciding to make hey. noise now Meow. hi can i help oh, you you should get the clip we'll see if grady cares about it hang on we, we got a thing and it's torturing our girls we didn't mean it that way Yes, Grady. Hold on, let me pick him up. Tell me your buddy. Yeah. We're taking a Grady break, everybody. Take five. Game called on a cat of kitty. Uh, hello, Grady. I just Grady. To set it off. Yay. So we got this thing. Hi, buddy. It's oh you you can't hear me. Let me get my headphones back on. Hang on. Hi, Grady boy. So we got this thing. It looks like a kitty. It's a bag clip like for potato chips and things like that. And I thought we'd use it for their food because, you know, it's a kitty. They're mm -hmm. kitties. But it does this. <laughs> Did you hear Peggy thump to the floor to come running over here? Where's where's that goddamn cat? Oh, my God. Where's the kitty? Where's the kitty? You can't see her, so this is great for... Come on. She's, like, over here, like... Oh God, well, you've got Grady's attention. Oh, and pet Doggy's here, too. I wish I still had the freestanding camera so I could show you, because they're very upset. He can still hear it. It's even in my headphone, and he's still like, son of a bitch. Where's the kitty? <laughs> Doggy's, like, under the desk, like, oh my God, where's the kitty? They get very concerned. He was. He was very concerned there. And we didn't mean this to be a torture device. <laughs> Yeah, but the best thing was we brought it back from Missouri. Yeah. And I specifically did not put it in our luggage because I didn't want that TSA experience of getting to our destination. I mean, TSA being like, okay, well, we ripped your luggage apart because there was a cat trapped in it. Yeah. But we did put it in Tara's purse. And every single time some she touched her purse, everybody would be like, what the fuck? What the it fuck? Is, it's, it's very sensitive. So, and I forgot to take it out of my purse for about three weeks. So I'd be in public a lot of the time and pick up my purse and everyone would be like, like, I'm not smuggling a kitten, I promise. And, so. and, and everybody, everybody in the channel is like, my cat just came running. Uh, oh my my, now mine's meowing. I guess it sounds like a very distressed cat. Yes, it does. So they find it like they come running because they're like, where's that kitty? What happened? Where is it? Would you look so at this? I, we don't use it on the cat food bag anymore because I don't want them to associate their food with cat torture. Would you look at this creature? Look at that floofy. He's just he scratches. <laughs> scratches. Oh, Grady. Good boy. All right, go on. Go play. Go play. He's like, I don't want to play. I want scratches. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, back to the car repair thing. Um, now that everybody who's listening to this on the MP3 is just like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> and every cat, it's like. Back to the car repair thing. I've had car repair work that did not please me before. Now, that's not the people who fixed my mirror, they did it perfectly fine. I'm very happy with it. But I've had it when it didn't please me. And I've had to talk to them about it. And I've had to go back and, you know, I, I've had to, can I speak to your manager? I didn't do this, no. Disgruntled customer slams truck into dealership showroom. Well, they're not going to fix that for you. Smithfield, New, uh, North Carolina. 
A man described as a disgruntled customer rammed his Dodge pickup into the showroom of a Smithfield auto dealership. The man, whose name isn't immediately available, crashed through a window at Deacon Jones Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. No one in the showroom was hurt. Smithfield police are consulting with the district uh, attorney's office over charges to file against the man. Officials say Deacon Jones uh, said Wednesday that the man was upset over routine manufacturer recalls on his pickup. The spokesman said, there was no record the man ever had his car serviced at Deacon Jones. Upon review, we learned the gentleman was having the truck regularly serviced at a nearby facility. They finally returned to us on Tuesday. Gladly offered him some options to address his concerns. He nevertheless seemed generally upset as he left, and the next thing we knew, his vehicle had breached the side of the building. So you didn't even you didn't even drive his truck through the right fucking place? No. Awesome. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he did not. He did I not. had a recall on my car. I had one of those airbags that fills your face with shrapnel and kills you. Yep, me too. And I waited way too long to do anything about it, actually, because I'm a jerk. And when I got in a minor accident and had to have my car fixed, the body shop was like, you know, you have a recall on your airbag. I'm like, yeah, I didn't realize how serious it was till they were like, so what happens with that is it shoots shrapnel at your face and kills you. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I'll see to that then. Yeah, but it, it's a thing. Apparently, he didn't even have work done. It was just the fact he was getting recall notices or something. And, and, and I don't think it's fixed. If it's a recall, they'll fix it for free. Yeah, they don't. You don't have to pay for a recall. They don't charge you. That's what if a recall is. Up, they fix it. Yeah. But so, also, before you drive through the front of a place, make sure it's the right place. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to commit to Sparkle Motion, make yeah. sure you're in the right zip code. Burger King fucks up your order. Don't drive through the McDonald's. Because <laughs> that's know, just... Give them some treats since we tortured them. <laughs> because, honestly, that's just confusing for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even do anything. I mean, I, it's it's bad enough when you have to work in any sort of sales environment, retail environment, and your customer is angry. It's worse when the customer is angry and y'all ain't even had shit to do with it. And I've had that happen. I've had customers come in and yell at me about how rude the people were at a different store. <laughs> and they're yelling at me about that store across the way. There's, and I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do about that. I, I don't work there. I'm very sorry. Uh, well, kids, it's time. it's time. You've been patient. <laughs> you've been good. Now it's time to find out what mm -hmm. did we get stuck in our rectums last year. This is a, a yearly look at. This is this is the rectal spectrum, everybody. This is this is stuff that's reported. It's for, uh, all reports taken from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission's Database of Emergency Room Visits. So these are things that were found in people's holes across the United States in 2017. Let's be, let's start. We're going to we're going to start north and head south. Yep. Um, start with things that were found in people's ear. Um you have the list? I don't have the list. Oh, let me give you the list. You need the list. Yeah. The list is amazing, Tara. Here. Start with the ear. Ahem. <clears throat> Quote. Was running with a stick in ear. Fell striking wall. Why were you running with a <laughs> stick in your ear? Don't do that. That's not safe. He literally... <laughs> He literally did the Joker trick from Batman on himself. Don't do that. That's not that's not smart. Bread? Bread. Um broom straw. Oh freak you sweet. Um I hope it was a brand new broom. Otherwise, welcome to your massive inner ear infection. 
putty of beans. beans. <laughs> this is like Mad Libs. Stuffed paper towel in ears to act as earplugs because roommate was snoring, unable to get it out of ear. I can't say I don't sympathize. But paper rips, man. Gasoline in left ear while changing fuel filter. Oh. Pencil shavings? How does that happen? Somebody has one of those sharpeners in their head. <laughs> How does that happen? And th th this is this rainwater? The best one. Googly eye inside his right ear and another through nose. Okay. That was a hell of a fucking party. So, <laughs> you're a Picasso now. Uh, let's move on to the nose. Nose. Um, shoved plastic toy up both nostrils. Um, wad of hair. hair. Oh, that's disgusting. Heart-shaped necklace pendant. Playing with a dime above head and looked up with coin falling. In. How big is your nostril if it can I accept it? I definitely do not believe that that's how that happens. If, 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 you're, if a, a dime can drop from the air and... I mean, how far back do I have to tilt my right. head? Right, like you first of all have to be upside down. Like that's some like when Frodo, the ring goes up in the air and it just happens to land on his finger. Like, no. Now this would that sounds... not how you shoved a dime up your nose and you didn't want to admit it. Now this 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 one, Jesus Christ, stuck hairpin into nostril, trying to clear blood clot from nosebleed. No. Look, I know how annoying that is. I've had that happen. It sucks. But no. Gee, I just had blood gushing out of my nose. You know what'll make it better? A sharp thing up my nose! Right, let's poke at it. Baby bottle nipple. Mm. <laughs> and one magnet in each nostril. Fishing lure. Those have hooks on them. Yes, they do. Let's see. The, the throat. Um... Diary, cigarette? Cigarette. Diary key. Someone took those old <laughs> cartoons way too fucking literal. That was a dramatic fucking fight. <laughs> um, Easter egg. You're not going to find it? <laughs> Swallowed staples because aliens told her to. Okay. That's the thing aliens do. Yeah. Fucking aliens. <laughs> um, sewing needle. This, there's a story here. Swallowed a pen because no one paid attention to him. <laughs> that's, that's half the channels on YouTube. <laughs> that's sad. Like I was telling him today, like, like, you and Todd and Kyle, like, I know all these people who work really hard on your YouTube channels, and you put weeks of work into videos and do research and this, that, the other. And the people with million-dollar channels are people that shove a pen up their nose and film it. Like, those are the people that are that are millionaires. I was going to say, I think, it's I think it's entirely possible some of these are kids. Probably. Probably a lot of that them. That one swallowed a pen because no one paid attention to him? <laughs> That could have been me as a child. <laughs> <laughs> I just I love the quotes on this one. A golden shiny penny. It's important to know that it was shiny. Grits. Aren't grits supposed to go down your throat? Not raw. Oh, um, really? Injured after eating <laughs> eating charging end of cell phone. Oh. And <laughs> the last one is amazing. Swallowed three plastic pushpins hit a dare at school, one fifteen dollars. 
Well, I hope that covers your copay. I love that the, the emergency room report put down. No, 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 no. Would you write this down? You tell them. You tell them I won. I won 15 bucks. You let them know. So next, we're moving on to the penis, Wait, gentlemen. What? What they do? What horrible things did we do to our penises last year? I didn't know they started doing that. Yeah, well, well, I'll read that later. Yeah. Um, it's it's time for the penis, everyone. So just, everybody, cross your legs. If y'all have a dick, um, let's start with a little screw. It's but funny because it's like a double entendre. Yeah. <laughs> a sharp toy. <clears throat> Four inch long metal sex toy. Oh, probably like a sounding rod? Yep. That doesn't sound like fun. Why, um, you, why were you so quick to confirm that? Because I'm guessing you're right. Uh huh. Plastic spoon. Oh. How? <laughs> How? Which end? How? Because one end is considerably <laughs> worse than the other. Like, they're both bad, but one is way worse. Get the butter. <laughs> Piece of domino? Piece of plastic shampoo bottle? And the last one is the best one. Coaxial cable. I don't think that's how... <laughs> any electronics work at all you know when we said fuck comcast this isn't what we meant. don't literally like no wowzers will said was his dick not getting a signal i guess not oh my god do not wire your dick to the television I, I'm almost scared to wonder what will show up on your TV if you have a coax cable shoved up your Someone dick. saw The Matrix and heard that line about how humans are basically batteries. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I don't gotta pay the power company no more. <laughs> oh, okay. Vagina time. Oh, here we go. Um, This one, I love the little stories. Was cleaning self in shower when wow. found a tampon in vagina. Concerned there is another tampon in vagina. Yeah, no. You gotta keep track of those. <laughs> like, you got, you really have to be diligent about keeping track of whether or not you have a large piece of cotton shoved up your cooter. It's important. Bottle it's cap. important because of toxic shock syndrome. It's important because if you jam another one up there, you got fucking problems. Although I'm not clear how you could do that because, like, there's a string that hangs out of you. It's kind of hard to miss. The next three. Bottle cap? That sounds like a really interesting uh, party trick. <laughs> Just open it. Yeah. <laughs> Bottle Penis ring with spikes on it. That's why you don't date dudes who jingle when they walk. That right there. A rust, a piece of rusty metal. Oh, no. No. Silicon balls. Patient states it is for, quote, you know, when your husband leaves town. A it's ball. Be for, like, kegels. A ball. Not any, now, that, that's, that's kind of concerning because there are many different sizes of ball there's baseballs yeah was it like a ping pong ball or a basketball <laughs> bike, bike reflector. reflector bike reflector head gonna help him find it if he can't find it in the dark that's not gonna help headphones you can't you can't hail him in like a fucking airplane headphones again <laughs> Not gonna, not gonna charge. <laughs> Hot towel. Mm. <laughs> the next quote. I can't read it. It's too. Oh my god. Was having sexual intercourse with boyfriend. Intercourse with boyfriend. When he put phone and money 
in vagina. <laughs> That's when you got to <laughs> dump or kill that fucking boyfriend. <laughs> I think we've discussed before that money is some of the dirtiest shit on the planet. You don't want that in there. That infection's never going away. You don't even have antibiotics. Oh, and his phone? Like, why? How fucked up were you? I've never been that drunk. Baby, I'm just, I would just leave these here. Hold these for me. Um, lollipop. Um, using massaging urethral vaginal stone balls and the string holding 15 balls together to solve can only find 14 balls. Okay. And the last one, toy magic wand. <laughs> Remember, flick and swish. I think that would flick be and an swish. <laughs> I think that would be an Accio spell. That's not what they mean by the magic wand. There is a sex toy called a magic wand. That's not what they mean, though. It's a different thing. And of course, it wouldn't be the rectal spective without. The, the star rectum. of the show, what you've all been waiting for. Peanut butter jar. Wow. <laughs> How? How? Honestly, Jesus. That's honestly impressive, except that I worry that you're just completely fecally incontinent. You, your farts no longer make a noise. <laughs> no. Peanut butter Jar. Wow. Quote, stuck a toy up his rectum because he thought he was constipated. How would that help? <laughs> it, that would be the opposite of helping. <laughs> Toothbrush? Toothbrush holder? Floss <laughs> container? Mouthwash bottle. Okay, was this all the same, dude? He's got lost Austin Powers little fucking dental kit. <laughs> you never know. You never know when you're gonna want to take a girl home, and you gotta have that fresh breath. And I don't have any pockets, so <laughs> got a keister stash. We have another. Would be really bad. We have another micro story here. At a party, having fun with his male friends. When one put a shot glass up his rectum. He is not your friend. That is not a friend. <laughs> How was it? it was, you know, we was all just sitting around having fun. Then Joe put a shot glass up my butt. That is not your friend. That is, I guarantee you that started by somebody saying, hang on, hold my beer. Friends don't shove shot glasses up friends' asses. Unless it's mutually agreed upon. Small wooden knickknack. What kind of knickknack? It doesn't okay. say. <laughs> I love this is, and this was probably a, an amazing moment in the ER. Plastic vibrating dildo <laughs> cannot turn off. The poor dude in the waiting room, though. Hey, do you guys hear that? <laughs> like you can't you hear sit? that. Does anyone else hear that but But Does somehow the next one is so much worse. Attempted to dislodge a dildo from his anus using a letter opener. Wow. No. Sharp things don't go there. No. <clears throat> Cigar tube. To relieve hemorrhoids. What? Again, not I, clear. Not clear on how that would help. I don't think I've ever heard that as a as a remedy. No. And we have a nice little sad story here. Quote: Feeling lonely, used a mascara container in plastic bag, <laughs> put in rectum. I mean, at least he wrapped it. 
I. It's, King God. Cup. <laughs> we had that one last year. Did they I mean swear the Kevin to... Costner movie? Like, is there a DVD <laughs> up there? That's just disrespectful. I mean, I know it's a bad movie, but God. Was drinking with friends and got to experimenting. Air freshener containers <laughs> stuck in anus. No. <laughs> what kind of experiment were you running? Those are made of poison. I can make my poop smell like potpourri. I bet you. Let's test this hypothesis. That that you notice that on Mythbusters they never stuck anything up their butts. Well, not the episodes they aired. <laughs> Those are all the DVD extras. A large bottle of shampoo. Now, when you say a large bottle, because I get shampoo in bottles like this big. Yeah, like with the pump top that'll last you a year. Yeah. Um, quote, sat in bathtub and felt something go into her anus. Really? Really? Was that something? A butt plug? <laughs> like, I love these people who just, like, passively things attacked them and jammed themselves inside their body. Like, nobody believes you. <laughs> just own it. Cat, Cat food, food can. can. Cat. What? what? No. And it does not specify if it was an unopened cat food can. Or an opened cat food can, which is so much worse. So much worse. Cat food is disgusting. Like, I love my babies. Their food is fucking repulsive. I'm thinking more along the lines of that nice metal rim. That's always sharp. Yeah. Uh, Bag of oral tobacco. Okay. Someone, someone put chaw up their butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how that works. If I put the chaw in my mouth, I'll get I'll, I'll lose all my teeth and get the mouth cancer. So I put it up my butt now. Ass cancer is not <clears throat> more fun. No. Quote, folks, these little stories are killing me here. <laughs> Water bottle in rectum does this to reduce anxiety. Sure. I don't, I do not think having a water bottle in my ass will make me less anxious. What, look, if that helps with your anxiety, that's great. That's fine. I'm glad you found something to work for you. Use the proper tools for the job. Buy, buy a thing that's made to go up your ass and then come back out. That's all. You, if walking around with a thing shoved up your ass helps your anxiety, cool. Use the proper tools for the job. That's all. Don't use a spoon where you need a screwdriver. I don't, I don't understand how he, how he or she. I don't. I don't. How I don't understand how they stumbled upon this medical breakthrough. Who decided to scrape the literal mold out of a petri dish and give it to sick people? <laughs> We're a fucked up species. Three triple, three double A batteries. Two AAA batteries. <laughs> like, why? D battery. That, that, w were you tired and you thought that would help? <laughs> <laughs> it keeps going and going and going and going. Well, you see, I was dressed up as the Energizer Bunny and she came at me with a couple of D cells. That's a really, really devoted bird. <laughs> That is the most devoted furry in all the land. <laughs> and the last one, another little story to go out on. Quote, patient said, I have a coin in my ass from a month ago. So we gave that patient 16 tetanus shots. How, how did, how is it still, be, how did you, what? It's been there for a month. How? Did you not notice, or did you just not care? How does the... 
Did you, have you not pooped in a month? Is this got to come a month? I mean, I guess if it hits like the, I don't know. It's just, it's. At some point, your ass pays out like a slot. <laughs> <laughs> when they say you need more iron, that's not what they mean. Iron hell, that motherfucker needs more fiber. Yeah. And to maybe <laughs> stop shoving change up his ass. It's not her a... ass. You don't know. So and now think about it. This this is this is the one to go home from. Somewhere, somewhere in circulation is the ass coin. And that's why you don't put money up your girlfriend's vagina. That right you, there is why. Ladies and gentlemen, you at home right now, somewhere in your possession, you may have the ass coin and not know it. I've, I've carried this uncomfortable hunk of metal <laughs> for five years. <laughs> and now I give it to you. This is your birthright. I just, I... It's... Why do we... Do, what? Uh... I don't, I don't know. Everything is bad. Basically like the worst thing I recall ever encountering is my mom mm -hmm. would occasionally get the cotton from a Q-tip would come on dislodged in her ear, and we'd have to help her with tweezers and get it out. And you shouldn't put Q-tips in your ear anyway, but that at least makes sense. My mom had a lifetime of terrible ear infections, so she kind of broke that rule because her ears were constantly inflamed. So well, at least it makes sense. Right. They, there was a reason, and she knew it was a dumb thing to do, but she was fucking agony. But she didn't decide to jam a pencil in there and then run around. I just, I just... It, Why was it up there for a month? <laughs> like, did you forget, or did you just not get around to dealing with that? <laughs> the air freshener is still... I know they're like, guys, guys, guys. My poop's going to smell like sea breeze. You watch. I promise you that that air freshening jelly, I don't know from experience, but I think I can say with some certainty that that's not going to make good lube. <laughs> no. First ingredient is almost always alcohol. It might feel like jelly. It's going to burn like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, that's the rectal perspective for 2017, everybody. 2018! <clears throat> we yeah. can't wait to find a, the spoon, though! I wonder which one of these things was the president. <laughs>